What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today we're going to be unboxing the all new 13 inch MacBook Air with Apple's brand new M1 chip inside. So this of course is going to be the first generation Apple Silicon based MacBook Air and I'm really excited to see how this thing performs compared to previous MacBooks including the 2020 Intel based MacBook Air which I just bought earlier this year and I will be comparing this to that 2020 MacBook Air with the Intel chip inside later on in this video and of course you can skip to that if you want to by looking at the timestamps below but anyways as you can see here I did get mine in the gold colorway it does also come in silver and space gray and the packaging is nothing too special just your typical MacBook Air on the side there which is color coordinated and looking at the back here before I unbox it all the way you could see I did get the base model which has eight gigabytes of RAM and a 256 gigabyte SSD which is also faster than the 2020 Intel based MacBook Air and this base model goes for $999 USD so anyways you can see the unboxing experience here is going to be very simple we just have this pull tab right here we can just go ahead and pull that right on off and a very simple to open box and we can just go ahead and take the top off this is a very thick box for a MacBook Air and you can see there we have the gold MacBook Air with the M1 chip. And then inside we have a USB-C to USB-C cable right here, which of course connects with this power brick right here, which is actually a 30 watt USB-C power brick. And that's lower than the power brick that comes with the MacBook Pro, which is a 61 watt. So just something to note there. And then of course we have our design by Apple in California pamphlet here, which contains all of our getting started info along with our gold Apple stickers, which I'm a big fan of the color coordinated Apple stickers and especially in gold, they look really good right there. So let's set all this off to the side and check out this new MacBook Air. So satisfying every time. So there we go. You can see very clean look. I actually really like this gold. Let's go ahead and compare the exterior to the 2020 MacBook Air with the Intel chip inside. Of course, there's not going to be anything changed, but just to show you guys kind of the colors and the side by side, you can see we do have two Thunderbolt ports right there on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side, we have the headphone jack. So only two ports. Unfortunately, I wish there were four, but we do only get two. And of course we have the same weight same size pretty much everything on the outside is exactly the same of course the big difference in this macbook air is going to be internally with that m1 chip which we're going to check out right away so as you can see here opening up we get the chime thanks to mac os big sur which ships on this macbook air we have our screen protector right here we'll go ahead and take that off and this thing is so light man i love the lightness and just the overall weight and feel of the macbook air especially after using the macbook pro which by the way if you guys did not see my macbook pro unboxing in comparison to the 16 inch macbook pro that video is down in the description and also linked up in the cards above and we have our basic mac os setup process here so i am going to set this up and i'm also going to transfer data over from the 2020 macbook air the intel based macbook air just the applications that way we have all the same applications on both devices for the testing that you're going to see later on so you can see here we get some things about accessibility we're going to go ahead and just do not now for that we're going to connect to our wi-fi network and now we get the migration assistant here so i'm going to go ahead and transfer data over from a max so let's continue on that and it's recommending us to connect to power but we get extremely good battery life which i'll talk about later on in this macbook air so i don't think i'm going to need that let's continue we're going to pull up the migration assistant on the previous generation macbook air right here we're going to continue put in the passcode and you're going to see on the new mac it shows my old macbook air right there go ahead and click on that continue and we have the matching numbers right there let's go ahead and continue and now we should see the transfer process begin and then we should be able to select what we want to transfer over and then we will begin the transfer process. So there we go. We went ahead and transferred everything over from the old MacBook Air to the new MacBook Air. And now we're just finishing up with the setup process right here. And now you can see we have the Touch ID setup right here. So we just go ahead and put our finger on there just like we would an iPhone. So I guess the iPhone SE2 is the last iPhone we did this on, but it's the same process as the iPhones. So very simple. We do two scans and then Touch ID is ready. And then we have the option to choose light mode, dark mode, or auto. I like keeping mine on auto so it adapts with the time of day. And then we have True Tone so you can see what it looks like with and without True Tone. I prefer to have True Tone on. And now it's setting up our Mac and we should be good to go with all of our applications transferred over from the old 
MacBook Air. So taking a closer look at the MacBook Air M1 versus the MacBook Air 2020 with the Intel chip, you're gonna notice that even on the inside, everything is the same. So pretty much everything design-wise is the same. However, we do have this new globe button down here on the bottom left-hand corner of the keyboard, which is going to act as an emoji button. So you're gonna be able to easily access emojis. So as you can see there on the screen, when I press it, the emojis pop up. So we did not get that on the old MacBook, and that is a, a small, but a very welcomed feature there. And then we also have some changes to the F buttons up top. So you can see like for F5, we have a microphone, whereas before it was the keyboard brightness up and down. So just some minor changes to the F keys up top and then also the emoji key down on the bottom. So just some minor changes to the keyboard buttons and how they function. But as far as actual appearance, like outward appearance, those are gonna be the only changes from old to new. And that's because all of the changes are done internally. So the biggest change from the old MacBook Air to the new MacBook Air is of course the M1 chip, but also we do not have a fan inside. This is a fanless MacBook Air, whereas we've had a fan on every previous MacBook in general, not just the MacBook Air, every MacBook before this has had a fan inside. But thanks to the new super efficient M1 chip, Apple did not feel the need to put a fan inside of the MacBook Air. So that's gonna be awesome for so many different reasons. Now, as far as the display goes, both have pretty much the exact same 13.3 inch retina display with 400 nits of brightness and true tone, but the new M1 MacBook Air has support for the P3 wide color gamut. So the colors will be slightly better on the new MacBook Air versus the previous generation MacBook Air. And then when it comes to the internals, once again, this is where we're gonna see the biggest change between these two. And that's because the base model of the 2020 MacBook Air Intel has a 1.1 gigahertz dual core i3 with eight gigabytes of RAM. And the new M1 MacBook Air has a base eight core CPU and seven core GPU with eight gigabytes of RAM. Now you can also pay an extra $250 to enable that eighth GPU core and that comes standard on the MacBook Pro, but they did disable one of those cores for the MacBook Air. But you know, if you're gonna pay 250 more for that eighth core, you may as well just pay you know, for the MacBook Pro at that point. But that is what the base MacBook Air comes with this year. So massive difference just you know, from the specs, just seeing the specs alone, you already know there's gonna be a huge jump in performance on the base model. And the crazy thing is, this new MacBook Air has the same $999 price tag that the previous generation MacBook Air had earlier this year. So it's just crazy the amount of value you're gonna be getting here with this new generation. You also get Wi-Fi 6 on the new M1 MacBook Air, whereas the previous generation only had 802.11ac. So you will have faster Wi-Fi speeds as well if you have gigabit internet, which I personally do. So that is a pretty big feature to have here. And then also we do have an upgraded FaceTime camera but it's nothing changed with the actual sensor or anything externally. It's the same 720p FaceTime camera, but we do get an ISP upgrade this year thanks to that M1 chip, and you will notice better video quality when on FaceTime or Zoom or whatever you use video for. And then another major advantage of Apple developing their own chip is that these chips are much more efficient than the Intel chips, and that means that you're gonna get better battery life. So not only are you gonna get better performance, but you're gonna get better performance while also saving a lot of battery life. So you get six hours longer battery life on the MacBook Air versus the previous generation. So that's up to 15 hours web browsing versus 11 hours on the previous gen, up to 18 hours in movie playback versus 12 hours in movie playback on the previous generation. So those are some pretty impressive numbers. I will be testing this out you know, more long-term and let you guys know if I'm actually getting that good of battery life. But so far, I mean, I've, I haven't lost a single percentage after going through the whole setup and everything. I mean, that's not really too impressive. We'll be able to tell more with the benchmarks and things like that. But still, I'm expecting great, great battery life here on the MacBook Air, especially since we don't have to use power to power a fan inside. I think that's also going to be part of the reason we're saving a good amount of battery. Now, before we get into the benchmarks in the Final Cut Pro video exporting test, I do want to mention app compatibility because this is a whole new architecture, Apple's M series chip, and that means that not every application is going to be compatible yet with this new M1 chip. 
but everything I've tested so far on the MacBook Pro and the, you know, the Mac mini have worked fine, including like all the Adobe applications and a lot of applications you'll download from online. And that's thanks to Rosetta. So you'll see like when I open up something like the Blackmagic speed test right here, the disk speed test, it says you'll need to install Rosetta. Do you want to install it now? And you can see below it, it says Rosetta enables Intel based features to run on Apple Silicon Macs. Reopening applications after installation is required. So let's go ahead and install that. And now we're ready to run this Blackmagic disk speed test. So this is going to be a comparison of the read and write speeds for both of these MacBooks. And both have a 256 gigabyte SSD inside, but you can see thanks to the improved SSD and the M1 chip, this new MacBook Air is getting far better performance than the previous generation. So for the write speed, you can see we have about a 1300 on the Intel based versus a 2300 on the M1. And then for the read, we have about a 1400 versus a 2000. And you can see the more times we run this test, the more the Silicon MacBook Air impresses and just completely outperforms the Intel MacBook by a long shot. It's literally twice as fast as the previous generation base model for the same price, but just wait, things get even crazier. Next up is the GFX Bench Metal Test, and you can see the crazy scores here once again. The Silicon M1 MacBook Air is just dominating, especially on the first test for the Aztec Ruins. You can see the FPS there underneath is just night and day difference. Then we moved on to a Cinebench bench test and we see these scores here a 1737 versus a 64 61 so that score is almost four times higher on the new macbook air which is just absolute insanity and then finally we move on to the final cut pro export test this is the one that i like to do because it's not just you know benchmarks it's actual real world testing something that I would actually do. So I loaded up the same 10 bit 4k footage into both timelines and timed how long it would take them to export both from a fully rendered state and from a completely unrendered state. So first I tested the 2020 Intel based MacBook Air, which exported this fully rendered clip in just about three minutes, which is pretty decent, honestly, for a base MacBook Air but let's see what the base M1 equipped MacBook Air can do. And as you can see, it got it done in just one minute and 12 seconds. That is insane, but wait, it gets even more insane. So after I ran that test, I decided to delete the render files and then re-exported the same clip with no rendering done whatsoever. And you can see the results here. The Intel-based MacBook Air exported this video in about 16 minutes. So you would think that the M1 based MacBook Air would get about what, 10 minutes, maybe eight minutes? No, a minute and 43 seconds. That is absolutely insane and proves how well optimized this M1 chip is. I mean, rendered or not, this machine absolutely flies through exporting 4K 10-bit clips, which is really surprising to me. I really did not expect this from the MacBook Air. This was kind of like a, an export time I would expect from a MacBook Pro, definitely not the Air. So very impressive results there. And not to mention, it did not get nearly as hot as the previous generation, the Intel-based MacBook Air with the fan inside. I mean, both got warm, but the one without the fan obviously did not get as warm. And also another big difference was the fact that there was no sound in the new M1 equipped MacBook Air just because there is no fan inside, whereas there is a fan inside of the other. So obviously I heard that fan running as the export test went on. So super impressive results. And once again, we have to keep in mind that this is just a first generation base model. This is literally the worst silicon based MacBook that Apple will ever make. So to see these results is just so promising for the future. So anyways, guys, there you have it. That is the 2020 M1 MacBook Air base model compared to the previous generation from earlier this year. So let me know what you think about this MacBook Air down in the comment section below. If you have any questions at all or any concerns, if you wanna see any more videos, let me know down there in those comments below. And if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you guys do subscribe for a lot more MacBook videos in the future. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Thank you